I see our friends are all ready and waiting for us at the crossing. I guess I'd better give them the signal. Get ready, children. Thank Here they come. Today now line up like we always do. That's it. Ready? Now turn on your signal lights. Tickets, please. I'll punch my own tickets. Three tickets, please, sir. Thank you. Why don't you give Bettina a hand? And remember, the passenger is please. always right. Tickets. Tickets. You know, he's been wanting to do that for a long time. Thank you. Hey, Bernice, better check your light. Turn off your signal light. Let's get on the car. No, 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 no. Come on, cut out the noise. The boss will just blow his top again. Let him know we're coming. I couldn't care less if he blows his top clean off. <laughs> that infernal whistling. I just know it's that Jimmy Bondy and that moron friend of his with a beard. It's not to be believed. For the last year, ever since that Bondy fellow showed up, I've had to put up with that horrible racket. Wasn't train service discontinued here? Of course it was discontinued. The railroad went bankrupt. That was why I took over the hotel. It must be dreadful having that wretched horde of children right outside all the time. What with the smell from the train and the noise from those children, nobody wants to stay in my hotel. One after another, all the regulars moved out. Who can stand that confounded whistling from morning to night? The chef is the only member of the staff who didn't quit. Here's your lunch, Jimmy. Hmm. Roast venison, delicious. Mm -hmm. Eat it before it gets cold. Uh, say there, John Pierre, have you been stealing all this food from the hotel? Nonsense. That's all the pay I get. That man hasn't paid me a single penny for the past few months. Uh -huh. Well, then, why do you keep on working here? Oh, I like riding the trains. It's really so much fun. Huh? And my job is very important. After all, what good is the best engineer in the world if he hasn't got a first-class fireman to help him? I'll be back tomorrow. Well, Jimmy, have we got a helmet for our new conductor? Hmm? I certainly don't see why not. <laughs> I've got an extra one right here for him. Come on, let's take a look. You see? What did I tell you? Now, let's see what we have here. Let's try this one on. <laughs> Better shine it up first. Uh-huh. Perfect fit. Okay.
After all, what good is the best engineer in the world if he hasn't got a first-class fireman to help him? I'll be back tomorrow. Well, Jimmy, have we got a helmet for a new conductor? Hmm? I certainly don't see why not. <laughs> I've got an extra one right here for him. Come on, let's take a look. You see? What did I tell you? Now, let's see what we have here. Let's try this one on. Better shine it up first. Uh-huh. Perfect fit. Okay. You've got your uniforms. Go to work. Regozani's arrived. With that son of his. And he's staying until the race begins. Well, you keep your eye on him until I get there. Inconspicuously, you know what I mean. Goodbye. Well, what do you know? He's staying right in our neighborhood. Not even ten minutes away. This is the chance I've been waiting for. How so? I competed in this Alpine rally two years in a row and only made second place. And this peasant, this Aldo Regozzani, came in first and took the grand prize of 100,000 francs. This time I'm going to beat Regozzani and I don't care what it costs. Let's have it. Coming, Jimmy. Just set it down. Yeah. Hey, it looks like someone's given Dudu the once over. <laughs> that goes in here, but careful, it's still hot. I'll be back in a sec. Hey, let me try it. Girls don't understand trains. Looking for something, friend? Uh, uh, yes, I was looking for my son. He was playing around here somewhere. He isn't in the workshop. I heard someone singing here, and uh, it wasn't the car, was it? Yes, it was. What of it? I'll believe anything now. Isn't that top speed of 200 on the dial kind of show off it? Mm, not necessarily. Why? Mm, you know, professional curiosity. I'm a race driver. Aldo Regozzani is the name. Haven't you ever heard of me? Hmm. Yeah, I believe you drove in the Alpine Rally. <laughs> yes, I think you could say that. I took first prize in the last two. Hmm. My name is Jimmy Bundy. Hmm. Pleased to meet you. Hmm. How many horses in there? Oh, 250, more or less. Well, more or less? Well, it's got a fortified gasoline motor in the back and an electric motor up in the front under the computer. It drives the front wheels, you see. Hey, Jimmy, where's the hammer? Oh, over there. Thanks. Uh, mind if I have a look? No, be my guest. Don't take that hammer for a walk, huh? Jimmy Bondy. You built this thing yourself? Mm-hmm. You've got a complete computer system in there. Right. I've got the various functions programmed on the tape. Thus far, I've got 17 different programs. The amplifier and recorder are hooked up in a series so that you can call for any program you want, either electronically or by simple voice command. It looks terrific, but does it really work? Could I have a look at this baby in action? <laughs> I don't see any reason why not. Okay. I can hardly wait. Okay, Jimmy. You watch that guy's face while I go to my act. Hey, listen. I'll bet you a bottle of champagne you can't move the car out of this position. You're on. You better call him up now, though. Then you can have him put that bottle on ice. Hang under your head, monkey. Here goes nothing. This is program 14 specially designed for tight situations, combined with four-wheel steering.
Now show our friend how you can drive by yourself. showing off again. I hope he doesn't crash into anyone. Oh, well, that takes care of that. Alexander, will you please hold this pail? Okay, sister. Now let's see you try jumping down. Whoa. Mm -hmm. Move out of my way. Geronimo! <laughs> One more trick like that, and I'm cutting off your lubrication. I don't know why you installed the net if you didn't want me to use it. Uh, you try to teach the kids traffic safety, and then you yourself go jumping off the train. You might try acting your age, you know. We kids look before we jump. Who asked you? Did you hear the car coming, or is your hearing aid turned off? It was all Dudo's fault. Don't blame sister. You know, for a little kid, you've got a pretty big mouth. Honestly, jumping off trains no at sense your age... No wasting your you breath you yelling were... at me. I haven't heard a word you've said. The battery in my hearing aid must be empty. She always does that when there's something she doesn't feel like listening to. She just turns her hearing aid off. Hmm. You don't say. Let's try it out. You know, when you find lost articles on the train, you're supposed to turn them in. Hmm? I want you to turn in what you found on the train this minute. Oh. Let's just move our lips and see how she reacts. I'm afraid I haven't heard a single word you said. I'm very sorry. Better go run after her and tell her we were just having a little fun at her expense. What if she gets sore? Oh, just tell her we were paying her back. You know, for having put us on. Go on now. Sister! Hey, hey sister. sister! Wait up! Hey, Jimmy, now that the kids are gone, you've got to admit it was funny when she fell in the... What are you doing out of prison, you old horse? Ah, no, Piccolino, how's it going? Okay. What brings you here, Marchese? What brings you here? Well, I've been thinking over whether or not I should buy this This silly little car, it's a circus car, not a racer. Base. I wouldn't be so sure about that. What do they want for this car? <sighs> Dudo isn't for sale. Listen, Aldo, you're not really planning to buy this jalopy, now, are you? Well, Just Marchese... a minute, mister. Dudo doesn't like being called a jalopy. Huh. And what happens if I call this jalopy a jalopy anyway? You'll probably get socked in the jaw. Wait till I get a hold of that big cover. Nobody would dare strike a Marchese in La Pozzi. I'll call him a jalopy just as often as I... <laughs> Jimmy, this jalopy of yours sure gets... Ah! Uh, 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 uh. Oh, I suppose this is another one of your little pranks, Mr. Bondi. You think you can frighten me away? Well, you're mistaken. I'll have you thrown in jail. Why don't you just tell us what you want? He wants to close us down. And force us to abandon the railroad. That's right. I've bought up all your IOUs, and if you don't... <laughs> You've made a monkey of me for the last time. And, uh, what if we pay our debts? You mean you can pay what you owe? That's right. And you won't get as much as a rusty nail out of the deal. Not as much as a rusty nail. You'd turn the orphans out on the street. Those are little brats, of course. This swine is giving you trouble, sisters. I'll knock his block off. I, I, I don't have to stand for that. Nobody's threatening me. No, sir. I'm coming back, and I'm bringing the police and the entire staff of my hotel. You won't get away hey, with did this. Did you hear that, Jean-Pierre? He wants to bring back the entire hotel staff. The entire staff? Why, that's me. I'll show him. <laughs> 27,000 francs. Where are you going to get all that money? Oh, I think we'll go for a little drive in the rally. We can earn 100,000 francs if we win. It just exactly how do you plan to put your hands on the entry money? 10,000 isn't exactly chicken feed. Hmm, yeah, well, I don't know yet, but I'm sure I'll think of something. How about a bingo tournament? I think that's more in your line, Sister Joanna. <laughs> Excuse me, I couldn't help overhearing. Maybe I could be of some assistance. Really? Why not, Signor Bondi? Any friend of Aldo's is a friend of mine. I'd like to make a little deal with you. You come up to my castle in about an hour, and if you accept my offer, which I'm sure you will, you can take the cash with you. But I... Uh... I knew you'd agree. I'll see you then later.
Go down to the parking lot, Dudu. No way, Bunky. I like the view here. teach you the difference. Bondy should win after all. Hmm. I doubt that, Mr. Brown. It will be your job to see that Bondy doesn't finish and mine to make sure Regozani doesn't even start. And how do you propose to keep Regozani here in the castle, sir? Nothing easier. My secretary Isabel is going to put a couple of knockout drops in Mr. Regozani's drink. He won't wake up until the race is all over. Huh? Someone at the door? Senior Bondi! How oh, very delightful to see you again, sir. Care for a drink? Hasn't Aldo Regazzani arrived yet, Marchese? No, I wonder where he could be. Hey, hold on. Where is Jimmy Bondi? I had an appointment to meet him out here. Oh, where don't is worry he? about him. I just made your favorite drink for you. Ah, your car against my money. And as you categorically refuse to sell your Beetle, I'll wager you on it. The first one across the finish line wins. Hmm. That's the Bondi chap's car, if I'm not completely mistaken. Very ugly little job, too, isn't it? Yeah. Mr. Brown, I'd like you to take a very close look at this thing. The Marquez is wasting his money betting on the race when he could have the vehicle out of commission in a matter of moments, don't you think so? Brown and Brown could fix it so that this car is only of value for the spare parts. Ho, ho, the fellows with the go-go. Putting this car out of order may not be as easy as it looks. Don't forget the thrashing it gave the Marquis. <laughs> the only way to approach this jalopy is to creep up on it. I plan to take great care when I... <coughs> oh! My teeth! Mr. Brown, that miserable thing has just helped himself to my choppers. I shall have to wrench them out of his grasp. Give me back my teeth, you... Mr. Brown, when we finish this job, there will be quite enough to buy you all the teeth you want. Try to be philosophical. Try to bear it with a stiff upper lip. Mm, stiff upper lip, sir, and it's quite out of the question. If the sisters get here soon, we've got to get Aldo out of that castle. Good heavens, Dudu. You up to your old tricks again? Honestly. Here they come now. Now you get rid of those teeth before they catch you. Honestly, some people are just never satisfied. Sister. Now, don't tell me you want to drive in the rally, too. I just happened to come upon a couple of loopholes in the competition rules. That this car was clearly designed and constructed to drive right through. What do you know? Sister Joanna is of the considered opinion that we stand a very good chance of winning the race. <clears throat> now, you listen to me a minute, sister. The only reason I made up this car for you was because neither one of you could shift a normal car into reverse. Uh, it wouldn't have a chance as a race car. No way. I'm sorry. But I don't see why we should... That will do, sister. No sense discussing it. After all, where would we ever get the 10,000 francs they're charging for entry money? Oh, by the way, how can we help you rescue your friend? And what's with that habit you asked us to take along? You know, a nun could just waltz right past that castle guard. It takes two to waltz, Jimmy. I'm coming along. Make that three nuns. I wouldn't miss this for the world. Oh. Sister, you're working for the Lord, not J. Arthur Rank. Put your glasses on. Never saw a nun kick the gong around before. 
time for a little nap. Hey, just a second. Huh? Where do you think you're going? Where is Aldo Regazzoni? Aldo? I haven't the foggiest notion. We know he's in here. Now, where have you hidden him? If that's your idea of a joke, then I'm afraid it isn't very funny. Oh, Captain! Mademoiselle, is there something wrong? They're only dressed as nuns. I want them arrested. They're imposters and thieves. Us thieves? Imposters? That's a filthy lie. Now we'll just see about that. The nurse! Sisters, don't act too hastily. She's a child of heaven, too. Oh, no! Hey, you! Don't move a muscle. You're under arrest. I'm taking you. We'll see who's an imposter around here. Oh. Anger. Hmm? Sit down there. I'll throw the whole thieving lot of you in prison. Hmm. Well, you said. I told you to rescue me, Captain. Come along. You can be replaced. Wait, I know. get my hands on her. Hey, fellow, you haven't seen a nun, have you? I just saw two. Yeah? They went that away. Thank you. Help! Help! Help me, somebody! Where are those idiots when you need them? Help! You're under help. arrest. You're the boss. Oh, oh, I... Did you hurt the fellow badly? No, hardly at all. the whole thieving lot of you in prison. Hmm. Well, you said... I told you to rescue me, Captain. Come along. You can be replaced. Wait, I know. get my hands on her. Hey, fellow, you haven't seen a nun, have you? I just saw two. Yeah? They went that away. Thank you. Help! Help! Help me, somebody! Where are those idiots when you need them? Help! You're under help. arrest. You're the boss. Oh, I... Did you hurt the fellow badly? No, hardly at all. Aha. <coughs> Won't somebody help me? Help! Help! Hey, Isabella, I look all over the place for you. I thought you wanted to go oh. dancing. <laughs> We've got to get him out of here before they change the guard. Oh, oh. Let me get him on his feet. Oh, Upsy Daisy. Come on, we have a moment to lose. Oh, Jimmy Bambino, yeah, you missed the whole party. Tell me all about it tomorrow. Come on. <sighs> Looks bad. Well, what do we do now? How are we going to get out of here? Doodle will manage that. <laughs> Doodle? Yep. <laughs> Agent! Company leave! Hey! Forward! Hold! And lift! And lift! And Sister, lift. will you look at that? They're marking time with their faces to the wall. What did I tell you? Doodle will manage that. <laughs> Wait till I get my hands on that Marquez. Don't you worry, we can wait. We'll let your friends sleep it off at the orphanage. Um, I think we'll take Highway 104. The road's not so steep. Highway 104? That's ridiculous, sister. That's a huge detour. I'm taking Highway 25. If you think I'm going to stare back at the road while you race over those curves, you're crazy. 
you want me to look back while you crawl down 104? Forget it, sister. Very well, sister. If you insist upon breaking your neck on 25, be my guest. And if you want to crawl along 104, I'll see you back at the orphanage next year. See you later, Jimmy. So long. Today's menu, macaroni and gravel. I should have known. Wherever Sister Mary Bridget goes in her motor scooter, chaos is never very far behind. That could have been you lying there. I uh, hope you didn't hurt yourself any, Sister. I'm all right, but look at this mess. What is that infernal racket going on down there? Sister Joanna, will you see what's the matter in the courtyard? It's all yours, Sister. Come on, you two, pick that stuff up and be quick about it now. Just get the boxes, kids. What about the noodles? Now, don't you worry about that. Doodle will manage it. Doodle, program six. Why do we need program six for? Don't ask questions. Get going or we're in trouble with the authorities. Whose car is that down there? Oh, it's a beetle again. <laughs> Sister Annabella, put your glasses on and get down there before the car does something silly. <laughs> Tell that car to be a bit quicker about it. They're waiting in the kitchen, and after that, I need some rug back. Get going. Somebody snitch the noodle. Bernice knows who. Snitch the noodle. Oh, for goodness sakes. Come on, they're waiting. Okay, but only because there's a sick man upstairs. Hey, Jimmy. My dad wants to see you. Thanks, Alexander. Your dad, the speed demon, is he here? Sure. And then Firm, are you upstairs? How much bye-bye juice you put in that cocktail, Marchese? I know perfectly well what I'm talking about. Your messenger only brought over half of the money. Uh, I was only kidding about the bet. Yes, and we'll all have a good laugh as soon as Mr. Brown brings over the other 5,000. Do I make myself perfectly clear? Ciao, Marchese. Oh, telephone under the blanket. Naughty boy. Better not let sister find out. <laughs> How are you feeling? Fantastico. I think I'm going to move in here and live with this horse. <laughs> Wanted to see me? Yes, I've got half your entry money. Uh, here we are. 5,000 Swiss francs. 5,000 Swiss francs? You remember that bet we made with our pal, the Marchese? He's still holding out on half of it. Huh. I was the one who made that bet, Aldo. And you're sure to lose it. You know that. That's more than enough conversation for today. The man has to get some rest. You can carry on with your chat in the morning. Go on now. You're the boss here, sister. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Tomorrow's the last day for registration. I've got to leave early for St. Moritz. Tomorrow's the last day? Didn't you know that? <laughs> well, uh, the best of luck to you. Good night, Sister Joanna. Good night. You have to register in St. Moritz? Yes, that's right, sister. The race committee has its headquarters there. Now, you kids listen to me. Here's 5,000 Swiss francs. Now, you bring them to the sisters. They know what it's all about. And be sure you don't lose them. Got that? All right. Terrific. Let's give it to the sisters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Take a look at this map. You see, these routes with the red markings are now one of the most important reasons why they call our race the goofiest rally in the whole world. These are what we call the no-no roads. No-no roads? You can't very well run the race on the main waterways. You'd have to block off the traffic for everybody else. But you're welcome to use any other roads on the map. Side roads, country roads, ski trails, etc. And if you happen to have a floating car, rivers and lakes. Uh, the important thing is no main roads. And all highways are forbidden. Oh, in other words, you move at a brisk crawl from control point to control point. Well, you might say that. Uh, 
This is not a race for people who keep the accelerator on the we floor. We only want them to drive the cars fast. <laughs> uh, yes, yes, that'll do. Our drivers have got to have something upstairs and a vehicle that can really take a whole lot of punishment. Uh, what happens if somebody does use one of these forbidden uh, routes? Oh, that somebody's immediately disqualified and has to drop out. We specialize oh. in disqualifications. You just go near a motorway, you're out. I take a certain pardonable pride in the fact that I've caught them all so far. You're a pretty dangerous fellow. What if you don't break the okay. rules? Would you be kind enough to fill these out? Ah, you can sure. sit down right over here. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. I don't suppose you two sisters want to take part in the rally now, do you? <laughs> As a matter of fact, we did want to register. This is Sister Annabella, and I'm Sister Joanna. Uh, mm. You don't mean to say you two are race drivers? That's why we're here. We've never had women drivers before. There's no prohibition against women drivers in your rules. What, you know our rules? Word for word. Sister Joanna studied to be a lawyer. Aha. Uh -huh. That may be all well and good, but the only trial we are running is a road trial. You should have studied to be a driver. Oh, but we did. As a matter of fact, we passed our driver's examination with flying colors about a month ago. And what's more, we have a customized car made to measure especially for this race by the top expert in the field. Now, what can I do for you? Aren't you the gentleman in charge of the finances? Uh, well, I should think so. After all, I'm the treasurer of the committee. We'd like a small discount, if you please. Fifty percent. Fifty percent? Of what, huh? Of that unconscionable registration fee. Who can afford to pay it? Aha! Now, if I understand you correctly, you only want to pay 50% of the registration fee. That's only 5,000 francs. Mm, that's all the money we have. We'll pay the rest if we win the race. Mr. Robusti, you can think of some way to help the ladies. You always have such good ideas. Uh, uh, I would really love to give you a small discount. Only, only what's going to happen if they win the race? then my head would really be on the block. How can I explain to the other drivers why they had to pay twice as much? And what if we agree to accept only half of the prize money? Oh, I would have to discuss that with the committee before I could agree. Oh, it won't work. Hmm. Why don't you just forget it? If you had any idea how we need that money. But then that's our problem, not yours. Thanks for listening. <laughs> why don't you stop by later in case the committee changes my mind? Bless you, my son. We'd better get home. It was nice to meet you. Just a minute, sisters. Hello. Jimmy, don't tell me you managed to find the entry money. Well, sort of. <laughs> Did you hear that? Now we can finally pay off the loan. Got to win it first. I'm just finishing up uh, filling out my registration form. Mm. It's a lot of paperwork. Well, when it comes to that sort of thing, we really know our way up. <gasps> oh, dear. Hmm. Knows her way around my foot. Now you put your glasses on. I'd appreciate it if you'd have a look at this. Now then, you mustn't fill in any of the blanks between number 14 and number 19. Simply put in non-applicable. Do you understand? Uh, this way you get full insurance coverage without having to pay for it. Now here, just forget the deposit. Paragraph 12, section 41, states that no deposits shall be required. Hey, you must have gone over the competition rules pretty thoroughly, Sister Joanna. For all the good it did us. Give the man his money back, sister. What? Oh, yes. We really appreciate your trying to help us, Jimmy. Here. Oh, look at it. Tell me, you haven't gone and sold your car now. Whoever told you that that was my money, huh? The children said you were the one who had given them the money. They said it was your contribution to our entry fee. Now that we're not driving in the competition, I'll have to return it. Won't I? Well, uh, don't you think you could find some other use for this money? I guess so. Absolutely. I'll say we can. Well, then, it's yours. You mean we... You heard him, sister. He said the money was ours. We'd better get going. Thanks so much, Jimmy. And lots of luck. She was looking forward to spending the prize money on new equipment for our little invalid children down at the orphanage. We'll be cheering for you, Jimmy. Wait for us. I'll sure try. <gasps> Why 
Watch Excuse where you're me. going, sister. Ooh, I hope the little baby is all right. Huh? That's no little baby. That's my lunch. Oh. Hey, it's the mad inventor. I've got news for you. I got that other 5,000 out of the Marchese. Now you can cancel your bet with him and pay him his money back. You're giving me this as a gift? Why not? I owe you my life as it is. Do me a favor, huh? take it. A little small change could come in handy. What do you say, huh? Am I right? Well, Aldo, I guess you are. You were looking for a little inspiration? I don't know what you're talking about. Don't you recall? To help our friends, the two nuns. Oh, I usually have inspiration by the battleful, but I'm sorry, this time, uh-uh, nothing doing, no. Tell me, what do you say to this inspiration? Good heavens, what have we here? Why, it's 5,000 francs. Now, don't you lose it. 5,000 francs? Well, I'll be a baboon. A message from heaven. Oh. Miss Bingermeyer? Yes, sir? You mentioned all these good ideas I always have. Well, here's another one. How do you like it? The registration fee for the two nuns. <laughs> superior's permission to enter this race, and that took time. She didn't see why we Not had to, to worry, pay. sister. Everything all right? Ready to go? Oh, yes. We've already filled the tank, and we've had all the tires checked. We're ready whenever you are. talking to you now from one of those perilous intersections that marks the beginning of a so-called forbidden route. Invariably, drivers try to gain a head start by sneaking onto one of these routes and running the risk of being completely disqualified from competition and thus losing their 10,000 franc entry fee. These attempts to get around the rules are almost always nipped in the bud, and it is amazing to note the many different tricks used by the referees to catch these cheaters in the act. Here you are. Uh, thank you. Get your Bye. apples, peaches, Pomegranates, uh, larches. Care for the French bean, madam. See anyone? Here comes one, sir. Huh? Better get your hand on that sign. You sure? Because it's clear. Good, let's get going. Stop, stop, stop! That's half your rally pass. You're out of the race. Are you crazy, lady? Hey, who are you, anyway? Jacopo Busti, head referee. If you're going to disqualify us, then you'll have to throw out that car over there. Oh. Oh, what car? I don't see a car. Right over there. Do your job, bud. <laughs> mm -hmm. Two 
turn around quickly, sister. This road is a no-no. Hello there, Mr. Robusti. We missed you at the beginning of the race. Hello. Uh, Aren't you going to confiscate their rally pass? What, our rally pass? What's this about? You aren't permitted to drive here. Mr. Robusti, please tell this gentleman that the rules of the competition, paragraph 6, subsection 14, only forbid the use of specific roads when the car is going forward. And you can see we are obviously not driving forwards. Oh, but of course you are. No, we are driving backwards. That is also obvious. The back of our car is up in the front. Now just look at our brake lights over there. Why, the front is in the back, and the back is in the front. Why, that's permitted. But there's nothing wrong in running a race with a car facing in the wrong direction. <laughs> there's no reason at all why you couldn't have installed a triple reverse gear system in your car as well. <laughs> Let's go, sister. We've lost far too much time already. <laughs> <laughs> According to this, our meeting place should be right up there. Oh, God. Here comes the helicopter with a container for our car. Magnifico! That helicopter was a brilliant idea. drive any faster? I've got the pedal all the way down. Somebody's signaling to overtake us. What? On a forbidden road? Come on, sisters. Better get a move on, or would you like me to give you a push? The nerve of that fellow. He's in violation of the rules, and he's making fun of us. Oh, you just wait till we catch up with you, fellow. We'll show you a thing or two. Sister? Oh, no, she's turned off her hearing aid again. Sister! I've got an idea. Why don't we couple our engines? Fine, that'll bring us all the way to 10 horsepower. Oh, this is wonderful. Do you smell that fresh mountain air? You can smell it after we've won the race. Didn't you know Whirly was our lookout? It flies up ahead of us and warns us of any danger. Or have you learned to see around corners? Honestly, some people are just never satisfied. Doo-doo to Whirly. Doo-doo to Whirly. Increase distance to 150 feet further up. Whirly to Doo-doo. Read you loud and clear, moving away. We'd better hurry, Marquesa. The weather report was calling for storms. Then it's a good thing we'll be flying most of this race. What do you hear from Brown and Brown? They just reported that they'll be waiting for Regazzani and that Bondi fellow up in the mountains. That's just a fact. Whirly, let's have your report. Individual in question directly ahead. Whirly will handle preliminaries for passing maneuver. Over and out. back at once and warn Aldo Regazzani he's in danger. You read me, Whirly? Loud and clear. Changing course to Regazzani's car immediately. Attention. Obstacle on the road. Move it! Obstacle on the road. Danger.
wasn't taken by surprise at all. Aldo Regozzani to service area. I want to report a total crack up. I'll need a substitute vehicle immediately. Over. What are you staring at? Oh. The mess you've got here. So what else is new and funny? Can I give you a hand? You get back on the road. Hey, wait a minute. Come on back. I do need some help. I can't get the door open. Move it's your stuck. Head. You ought to watch where you're going. And you'd better watch your mouth. I'll uh, close the door for you. I can handle that myself. Well done. It's a pity you're out of the race already, Aldo. Nonsense. I haven't even started racing yet. I don't follow you. You ought to read the competition rules more closely. If you report a complete crack-up to the racing committee and they confirm it, then you can continue in a substitute car. If that's not a wreck, I don't know what is. <laughs> that it is. You uh, didn't happen to see my little helicopter, did you? That little pain in the neck belongs to you? Yes. I wanted to warn you of that obstacle on the road. That jalopy. I would really love to find out who put that thing up there. The place looks abandoned. Really? Didn't you see anyone? So that thing was planted there intentionally for me to crash right into it. Marque... Uh, the Marchese? Ah, uh, si. Of course it was the Marchese. When I get my hands on him, I'll twist his head around. Let's have a look. How? Dudu will manage that. Dudu will manage that. Ugh. They're walking Sprout, over to I'd the car. Like to know what kind of trick Jimmy Bondy has up his sleeve this time. If they're anywhere around here, we'll find them. I suppose that's some kind of a slogan. Regrettably, only a semi-success. Am I talking to Brown and Brown Limited? I say, was that the telephone? I shouldn't think so. Anyone on this mountain? Hey, hand it over. Hello? Hello? Who is this? I believe you're the fellows with the go-go, if I am not mistaken. I've been sent up here to put you through the go-go test. What? He, he wants, wants to test our go-go? Now, I want you fellows to come running down the mountain, shouting your slogan at the top of your lungs. The fellows with the go-go. Well, what are you waiting for? Good heavens! How very undignified. Let's get out of here. Right! You'll do as you're told, unless you want a whirlybird up your nose and... Oh, oh. Buddy, whatever happened to that substitute car? They said it would take four minutes. In fact, I think I can hear it coming in on a wing and a prayer. Up there. Here comes the drove of it right to catch at the entrance. Get your sign ready, Mr. Roboshti. Aha! This time he won't get away from us. Now our disguises are perfect. This my hair to water. Very attractive. Well, here we go. Stop! Stop! Stop, I say! Oh! Are you out of your mind? Get out of my way, you idiot! Can't you see we're running a race? 
That's what you think, can't you read? This route is a no-no. <laughs> this is the end of the road for you. You're disqualified. Since when do they start hiring hippies to referee these races? Unless you're uh, right at your service. Jakob Robusti, head referee. Now let's have your rally pass. Disqualified. You called up fair. Why, 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 why? That should be perfectly obvious. You haven't read the competition rules very carefully. Otherwise, you would realize that no car can be disqualified for taking a no-no route unless all four wheels are going forward. Now, you are facing forward. But what's the difference between their car and ours? Hmm? One item. The back of the car was attached to the front. Only it was turned around so it could go forward. Thus, uh, two of the wheels were going backward. <laughs> Yellow Beetle, the competition is tough, but he's still way up in front, folks. But the others are in hot pursuit. And this race is getting more and more like a catch-as-catch-can horsepower battle. It's becoming a murderous fight against both the clock and the wild rules under which this, the goofiest rally in the world, is conducted. All the referees have their hands full keeping control over these wild men of the wheel. And as if this weren't enough, the scene of battle has now shifted to the country of eternal ice and snow, an open invitation to accidents and dropouts. One novelty in this year's event is the commendable conduct of those two little nuns participating. Without any regard for their own time loss, they have been stopping regularly along the way to render first aid to injured drivers. These ladies are sportsmen in the truest sense. After all the drivers like this, you'll never finish the race, sister. Not to worry, we'll get there sooner or later. Now then. Oh, oh, oh. Hold still, it won't take much longer. Could you do us a favor and tow us up to the top of the mountain? Sure, what's up? Well, it's like this. We were driving in a race and everybody else got ahead of us. We could do with a lift. Sure, sister, hop aboard. Thanks a lot. Blithering idiot! Where do you think you're going? That should be obvious. Still no news from the sisters? I'm afraid they must be stuck up there on the mountain pass. 
Not so fast, Sister Annabella. This is a very slippery road. What difference does that make? We have a four-wheel drive. Drive on. You're losing time. <laughs> oh, I'll catch up soon enough. I feel kind of responsible for that car the sisters are driving. I want to check how she's running. You see, I put her together. Here they are. Hey, Aldo, what's the matter? Having trouble getting out of the car? I noticed you've been putting on weight lately. Nice beating into your own game for a change. Get out of here. Then you better watch out. We'll see who wins this one later. Huh. Wait a second. Watch it. What do you think you're doing? Are you suggesting we don't know how to use the brakes? How far ahead are they? Well, the Beetle about a minute, the Marchese about half a minute, and Mr. Farello Mr. Farello is, is my worry from now on. So long. How's the car been holding up so far, sister? The road's kind of slick. Good heavens. You made it over that mountain, now all you have to do is roll it down the hill the rest of the way. Is the beetle doing all right? By the way, where is he? Doodoo? He's over there at the parking lot, uh. giving his spark plugs a rest. Oh, that does it, Mr. Brown. Now this wretched car is under our complete control. So from now on, we'll be running the show. That's absolutely right. I'd love to see the look on Bondi's face when he discovers his computer's been tampered with. <laughs> This is a fox. You want to play dirty with me, kid? You're on. Here we go. I think you owe me a new car. This is all I owe you, creep. Now try breaking the other hand. Take that. I'll teach you to get funny with you. You will, will you? Guess what, Padello? It's springtime. <laughs> Come here. Good night. Jerry, come out and fall like a man. Mamma mia. Oh, look, he's praying for the poor man. Anything we can do for you? No, thanks, sister. Everything's under control. Don't you lose time. I think I should go down there and check out that situation. You go on ahead. What do you mean you haven't got a substitute car for me? The one you gave me is a total Sorry, wreck. Mike, you just been disqualified for interfering with another driver. Hey, what do you mean disqualified? The first car forced me off the road. The second one ran right into me. What kind of a lousy deal is this? Did you hear that? They disqualified me, Aldo Regozzani. All because this good-for-nothing bum drove right into my door. You better get out of here before I... You know, sister, this race is just like life in the convent. You see how the drivers all take care of one another. If you hadn't stopped me, I'd have made tomato sauce out of that guy. Ah, so what? I've had it. Hey, Jimmy! What? How would you like to have me as your co-pilot? Okay. Hey, that's great! Come on! But you let huh? me do the driving. I don't want that happening to Dudu. You see, he's much too precious. I'll kiss every bolt in his carburetor. Come on now. We don't want the Marchese to win this rally. For a while there, it looked as if Ragozzani's hour had come. As for the two nuns, time alone will tell whether their prayers will be answered. You haven't even mentioned Jimmy Bundy.
Looks like he's already out of the running. I'll bet any amount that he'll win. I'll bet you. How much? My last year's salary of chef de cuisine. Uh, agreed. Which you have yet to pay to me, monsieur. <clears throat> oh, all right. And if you lose, you work all next year for no pay. Very well. Look at that crater unloading from the helicopter. Very suspicious. Who's that getting out? All right, men, time is of the essence. The finish line in Montreux is still almost 50 miles from here. Oh, we gotta put this back on a boat? Nah, that's why we flew this baby over the mountains. The head start, he's got the Marquesa can walk to the finish line. I think he had his car on that helicopter. Then he should be disqualified. Did you post the guards? Yes, sir, two men. They'll make sure no one catches us. I'm glad none of the referees caught on to the fact that we're flying. <laughs> <laughs> My God. Why, that's the first violation I've ever seen. Take a good look, sir. I know that's the contestant. Disgraceful. We better get after him. That looks like a fast car. But first, I want to get a good look at that helicopter for future reference. If I don't miss my guess, that's the Marchese. Well, if he thinks he's going to get away with this, he's got another thing coming. There's the referees. Come on, guys, hurry up! Hasn't this beetle got a heater? Mm hmm. Right here. High time. If I'd known you were planning on this kind of shortcut, I would have flagged down a goat cart. Well, you know now. Hey, watch that, will you? Okay, so we made it up this mountain. Now all we have to do is get off it. We need one of those things. It looks like our friend is stuck in the snow down there. You always say Doodle will manage. I'd like to see him manage this. Well, how about it? Well, anything they can do, we, we can, can do, do better. better. I don't get it. Well, we have to fly, don't we? I was we? just kidding. Just hang on. Hey, what's with the long exhaust pipe? Take another look. It's a rear propeller. Standard equipment on every helicopter. Hmm. Now for the rotor blades. Help me, there's one under your running board. You don't really expect me to believe this car can fly, too. You can see for yourself in a minute. Manage it. <laughs> oh. Hey, now we can catch up with the other drivers. Yep. The rotor blades. Help me, there's one under your running board. You don't really expect me to believe this car can fly, too. You can see for yourself in a minute. Do you manage it? <laughs> oh. Hey, now we can catch up with the other drivers. Yep. Aha, uh -huh, in there. Right. And then you turn it. <laughs> is it locked? Yeah. Good. Now all we have to do is get in. That's right. Careful. You can't afford to lose your head at a time like this. What did I tell you? Doodle will manage it, huh? <laughs> Jimmy, listen. Mamma mia. I just changed my mind. I'm not sticking my head in the salami slicer. Hey, where do you think you're going? Look, it runs just like a dream. Like a nightmare, you mean? You're not getting me, that thing. But this is the maiden voice. Call me back when she's a grandmother, okay? Let's see. I'll 
hit you right with him. Hey, over here, Papago! No, careful! Taxi. There are all kinds of hey, people I'm around here! Hey, I'm a new home. He's a... Ah. An idiot. Oh. Oh. Some people are just never satisfied. Rope. Oh! Hang on. I'm coming. Careful, Jimmy! The bastard! He's telling me. Just because you're a big hand didn't mean you had to go pack yourself in ice. Save the joke for the next butcher's convention. Well, uh, seems like the perfect time to see if his computer works on our frequency. <laughs> Begin program. to the end of my rope, I'd find you on it. <laughs> Prepare to transfer the flight program. So long, fellas. Oh, no. Dodo, stop it once. Hey, what? Dodo, you lost your mind? Cut that out. You to land at once. You programmed me to fly, didn't you? I did no such thing. Now you come back down. I'm programmed to the next control point, and that's where I'm going. You coward! I'll get you for this. Now come back! <laughs> Dudu, I can't hang on anymore. I... Honestly, some people are just never satisfied. You stubborn mule. <laughs> gonna catch me, huh? <laughs> of course I would have caught you, but the sun blinded me. <laughs> yeah, tell it to the Marines, you big show-off. Uh, who are you calling a show-off? Doodoo's frequency somehow. And how long can Doodoo keep on flying? He's programmed to land at every check-in point. There isn't a single thing the Browns can do about that. I wonder how we two are going to make it. Some question. From the look of things, it looks like the two of us are going to take a long walk across the ice. A walk? See. Si. You got a better suggestion? Dudu managed that one all right. Don't wave your lousy propellers at me or I'll put out a contract on you. Get lost! And then go double for the Marchese! I 
hope we make it around that mountain before the weather changes. Look out, sister. Here they come. Turn left. Now turn right. And turn left again. That's fine. Wait a minute. Drivers. Now turn right again. Now left. Now right again. Now left again. The race now has entered a decisive phase. Only a few of the original drivers still remain in the running. The Marchese della Pozzi is still way out in front. Your friend Bond is about to cost you a whole year's pay. I'll raise you by a year's salary as head waiter. Fine, you know. Of course, I mean uh, my back pay. Very well. I wish all my employees were as cheap as you are. Jean-Pierre, he's lost in the mountains. So what? Jimmy Bondy always winds up on top. Wait to get my snowshoes loose. I gotta sit down. Better get out of here before the before the fog settles. <laughs> Do you see what I see? Uh, where? It looks like a Hertz Renekite. Let's have a look, Eldo. Okay. Let me give you a hint. Yeah. <sighs> I hope they have something hot to drink. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Hurry up, Eldo. What kind of a cockite scheme have you? Shh. Huh? Quiet. Save all your strength. You're gonna need it. Let's go. Hey, you're not gonna fly one of these contraptions. You got any other ideas? And what happens if we crash land? Do you see how high this mountain is? Will you guys hurry Hold up? on tight. Cool it. Cool. Hey, man, Hold on our way. Look, he had a soft landing. Sure. Something deep down in my pistons tells me I've seen enough snow and ice for one day. I wonder where this central point is anyway. I never flew one of these things before. Don't worry, neither have I. There's always a first time for everything. Here come Brown and Brown again. Get a move on. Oh, I don't wanna. Shut up and strap up. Get going. Going? Where? Down. How'd you put this thing on? I'm not sure myself. I guess you just slipped your arms and figured it out on the way. On the way? Cut below. Here come the rock brothers. Jimmy, wait for me. I hope I don't get kite sick. There they go. 
go on those dashed kites. Start flying! Jimmy, what do you do with your legs? Shall we fly down for a moment and keep them company? Perhaps we can give them that little extra bit of turbulence. Right. Another challenging task. Or... I know. <laughs> ho, ho, oh, the, the fellas with the go-go. Aldo, watch out! Here come Brown and Brown Limited. Get out of their way. Who told them we were on the way? <laughs> Better write this one off, I think. We've got those other clients to deal with before they get to Montreux. Very well. We'd better get going straight to Montreux, then. You know, I'm getting rather sick of this wretched helicopter. Come on down, we made it, Aldo! <laughs> Will you get out of my landing pattern? You heard me! Move it! Look out below! Would you mind telling me how to land this thing? Whoa. Hey, call my 
my mother and tell her I loved her. Keep pumping! That's at the ground! The best act can do. What a relief! Well, once you've learned how to land, you might make a very good kite flyer. Go fly one yourself. Was I all the way up there? I'll say you were the very picture of bravery. Now let's get these straitjackets off. Dudu's waiting. You know where Dudu is? I told you I programmed him to the next control station. Hey, now, wait a minute. You don't mean to tell me that he flew here all by himself. Of course he did. There, look for yourself. Jimmy, uh, you think you could get Dudu to fly with two passengers? Sure, why not? That's terrific. Then we can fly the rest of the way. Eh, flying is strictly forbidden. You tell me how else we can catch up with the other cars in the rally, man. Don't worry, Doodle will manage that. Uh, Doodle will manage that, yeah. Come on. Time to waste. Astonishing yet true. Those plucky little nuns in their push-me-pull-you vehicle are very much in the running even now. And have every chance of carrying Papa. the day. Ah, but the others are catching up. They'll meet at a crossing just outside Les Saints. Starting from there, we can count on a real free-for-all all the way down to the finish line. Well, there doesn't seem to be much question who's going to win. You haven't heard anything from Bondi, have you? I'll also bet the yield wages a cheap pot on him. Which you haven't been paid. No, you're wrong. The two nuns have just passed Laysan Crossing, still driving in reverse gear. And here come the others hot on that trail. Folks, this is the closest race we've ever had here. Only time will tell whether the Marquise and the two brave little nuns will be able to maintain their narrow lead over the others. Sister, it's all over for you and me now. We'll never make it, Marquesa. The others are all overtaking us. Aha, you're forgetting brown and brown. <laughs> now then, this mirror is our best idea to date. They'd all think there's another car coming straight at them and react accordingly. Aren't we, devil? Out of the way, Mr. Brown. Here comes our first victim. feel good all over. The Marquesa should be pleasantly surprised. What? Yes, I should jolly well think so. Look out, Marquesa, that idiot's coming right at us. Oh, here comes a real idiot. I'll bet he'll make a lovely cracker. What's the matter? It's a trap! Back to the proverbial drawing board. Yes, that was really a pity. Why are you driving about in a zigzag? I'm still looking for my glasses. They dropped off, but I can see fine. Good heavens, here comes another. I 
wonder what all that noise was. Are you all right, sister? Oh, I never felt better. Oh, uh, but... Easy, easy. Sister, tell me, what went wrong? It happened so suddenly. Looks like somebody tried to pull a fast one. Oh, my poor leg. Mm. I didn't do anything wrong, did I, sister? Of course not. No. Then why can't I get the car to run? I'll see what's going on. Jimmy, can you fix the car? I don't know. I'll take a look. Not good. The axle's all bent out of shape. All this hard work for nothing. And only a couple of miles away from the finish line. You've still got to admit it was a great race while it lasted. <laughs> hey, Jimmy. Yeah? Get on all of this. accusing everyone else of having racked up his car. I tell you, what a mess you did. Let me out of here. Cut it out. Cut it out. I'm going to hit you. I'm going to get to a fall. I'm going to get to a fall. I'm going to get to a fall. Oh, this isn't my car. Oh, I'm going to the door. The crawl out of the exhaust pipe, you swear. How about that? I told you we were going to win this race. Come on, let's go. Go on ahead. What? I'm not going. You must have a driver in the car at the finish, otherwise they won't credit to win. Well, then you drive. But you'd be giving away a hundred thousand francs. If you give up right before the finish, you'll make the Marchese a very happy man. Oh. Well, that's more like it. Hey, what's wrong? What's the matter with this shrinking violet now? Uh-huh. Just as I thought. Oh, Jimmy, have you locked yourself out? Uh, no. I've just programmed the car to help other vehicles in distress. Oh, lots of luck. We'll have long white beards by the time we get in. Perhaps. Just what does this program do? It makes sure Dudu doesn't leave until you're back on the road. Would you mind explaining just exactly how that works? Oh, I guess Dudu would give these yeah. two halves of his sister's car a hand and help them make it across the finish line. Right. One thing I learned in the convent is the joy of togetherness. Just a second, Dudu. I'll be right with you. <laughs> now, how are we going to get this ridiculous car back on the road? Don't get snotty. The car has gone on ahead. I have to remind you, gentlemen, that the car has to have a driver when it goes over the finish line. Got about that. Thanks for reminding me, Jacob. Come on, Jim. <laughs> Now it's time to put these violators out of the run. they kill each other. I'll show you. Oh. Oh. Cut that out. Uh, you're all disqualified. Oh. Oh. Okay, pick up that bucket and let's get going. Get those bad mouth my hat. Okay, I apologize to the whole Stetson family. Now move it. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we have just learned that there was a huge pileup only a few miles away from the finish line. Fortunately, none of the drivers suffered any serious injuries. It must have been a miracle. And speaking of miracles, the first car is about to arrive here at the finish line. And guess who it is? <laughs> Thank 
beats us to the finish line. We're out of a race. Isn't there any way to stop it? Well, not that I know of. Just wait till I catch up with him. What are you going to do with him? Turn him into scrap metal, that's what. We'll just see about that. here, sister. He stopped suddenly right in front of the finish. Hey, do you suppose he heard what you said? Do you think I did? I don't know. Oh, beautiful. Here comes the Marchese. Get your fenders over the finish line. Forget it. We're going to have to pull him. Yeah. Hmm? Me? Forget it, fellas. Give him them a minute. They're in trouble, Harper. The race is on. Let's try her again. Yeah. Get going or I'll scrap you. A soft answer turneth away wrong. You heard the lady. And here comes the competition. Come on, Dudu. Would you please drive on over the finish line? Please, Dudu, old pal. Please. Sure, Jimmy, old friend. Be my guest. He started. Hurry, hop on. One moment, gentlemen. Maledetto. You don't look like but I get lost. Hey! It's all yours, Marchese. Get your checkbook ready. <laughs> Looks like we did it, pal. <sighs> Not even second, I don't believe it. That rotten beetle. Marchese, you are disqualified, sir. Hmm? You're out. Huh. Don't be stupid. Our race is exclusively for car drivers. It's not for any kind of flyers. I witnessed the whole thing. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I don't want to appear modest, but I told the dummy off. Oh, by the way, who finally did win Ladies the race? Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, oh, please. I never found out. Here are the official results of this year's Listen competition. The first prize of 100,000 francs goes to Sister Joanne. How oh, oh, that they made it? Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> step forward to the <laughs> On behalf of the entire committee, ladies, I now award you the Golden Rose of Montreux. Congratulations on a great Thank race. You. If you don't mind my acting, sir, hmm? is that all there is? You wouldn't just happen to have that 100,000 franc check on you, I suppose. Sir? Oh, why, of course I have it, sir, right here. Accept it with my compliments. <gasps> Thank you. Ah, uh, if I may address a few words to our distinguished winners, let me just... Let's show this check to Jimmy now. ...in our prayers as we hope we are in yours. They, gave they didn't give it to you, sister. You want it? That was really a terrific race. <laughs> Do you suppose this is real gold? Mm. Let's see. Gold, 24 carats at the very least. We could never have done it without you and Dudu. Dudu? Where is that scamp? What do you want Dudu for? What? To drive home in. What else? You're not going to hurt the car, are you? Of course not. Now tell me, where is he? I imagine he's hiding from you. He's hiding? Up here, gang! And if you want me to drive you home, you're gonna have to stay pretty clean. How in the world did he get up there? Uh, it's like this. Do-do-do manage, manage that. <laughs> <laughs> 